This is how to create a terrible mix. There's eight things you absolutely need to do if you want a terrible mix. So let's get started. First of all, ignore your volume balance. Don't spend any time on this because it's probably not that important, but really it is. So uh, if you want a terrible mix, then don't spend any time in your volume balance or just very little. Spend about three minutes, five minutes, just you know, kind of sort of getting it roughly in the right spot and then move on. Don't spend time on your volume balance if you want a terrible mix. Okay, number two, over mix with EQ. Make sure that with your EQ, you're cranking everything by minimum five or six decibels probably best be doing, you know, eight to 10 decibels to make sure that your mix is truly awful. Number three is make sure that you're panning incorrectly. So make sure either everything is in mono, so it's all in the center, or make sure that you're putting random things way off to the side. Like make sure your snare is hard left and your kick drum is hard right and your vocal is like off center by at least 30 degrees. So just do things that nobody else is doing. Doing, and that's a great way to have a terrible mix. Number four is compress everything a lot because especially things like samples and synths and anything that's already super dynamically stable, make sure you compress those extra because things like that are definitely going to sound worse. And so if you want a terrible mix, then you should over compress the things that don't actually need to be compressed and don't need any dynamic stabilization at all. Number five is if you want a terrible mix, you want to put effects on everything in your mix. Make sure you have tons of reverb, tons of delay, random, you know, roto cabinets and just anything you can kind of think of. Have at it. Put effects on everything if you want a terrible mix. Number six is don't use any references. Make sure you're not listening to anybody else's mix when you're mixing your own mix because, you know, they might inhibit your creative freedom and therefore you need to have ultimate creative freedom over your mix and you want it to be absolutely terrible unlike everybody else's mix so don't listen to their mixes because you want yours to be extra bad number seven is never take breaks don't refresh your ears by walking outside you know taking five in the sun and make sure that you are just grinding it out until the very last compressor, the very last mix bus compression is added to the mix and you are then done with your mix. So make sure that you don't take breaks, you don't ever step away and you just hammer through the entire mix all in one sitting if you want a truly terrible mix. And then number eight, the final one is don't get any feedback on your mix. Make sure that you're not sending it to trusted other engineers and mixing engineers and mastering engineers and don't talk to any other producers in the music industry or outside of the music industry to get feedback on your mix. If you want a truly terrible mix, you need to make sure that you're the only only person that's touching that mix and has any creative input into the process. With that, I hope you enjoyed this on how to get a terrible mix. And if you are in search of a better mixing process, then I created a mixing checklist that I still use to this day on every single mix that I ever do. And that is down in the description of the video. So go ahead and pick that up if you want to learn how to mix better. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. I'll see you there.